People come to me asking, what is coding and how do I do it? So in this module, I'm briefly gonna talk about what a code is and what it does. This is at the stage of research where you have collected your qualitative data, you have often transcribed it, or if it's visual, you have a visual representation. You're using photos, drawings, etc. At this stage, now you're ready to do your analytical work. So what is a code? Paraphrasing Saldana, a code symbolically assigns a summative or evocative attribute for a portion of qualitative data. You're doing research to understand why things happen, what are relationships between phenomena. So when you're coding, you're looking at your qualitative information, your data, for patterns of similarity. So once you've done interviews or focus groups or participant observations a number of times, now you're looking across those different experiences for similarities or differences um, with respect to what people say or what people do. So this is to say that if you hear somebody speaking at length about why they came to Duke, you might give a code why I came to Duke. That would be a potential summative statement about a very long amount of text or a diverse amount of visual data. That would be one option for coding that long amount of text. I'm gonna give some examples of what different codes are and why you might use them. We use codes specifically to refer to our research questions. You might be looking at frequency. How often do they do something? Or how often do they say that they do something? You could also be looking at sequence. Sequence is particularly useful for thinking about causation. How often do they do it? What do people do? And do they do it before or after something? So in order to think about causation, you need to be able to say that A comes before B and that therefore A causes B. This is how qualitative work can be quite useful is that you can in fact code for sequencing and, and thinking about causation. Some people code to understand what's going on. They're using exploratory coding. They try as much as possible to just let the text tell them what's happening. Other people know which questions are most important and they're going to disregard you know, 20 to 80% of the interviews that they've conducted in order to get to the meaty questions that they really want people to answer. Both are fine ways of going about coding, but it depends on your discipline and it depends on, it depends on your research agenda. So if you know which questions are important, <laughs> if you know what you're gonna focus on, then you've already done some coding in your head. And in that case, you can predefine your codes and say, I'm gonna code on emotion, I'm gonna code on X, Y, and Z. You can assign that code a color or a number or whatever, and then you can go in to the text and code that way so that you're just marking it according to the code. So some of it is very inductive, meaning that the coding process happens iteratively by virtue of going through it and building your theory from the ground up. It's called grounded theory. And some coding is very deductive, you know it's important, it's just a matter of pulling out themes and the codes that help you clarify an idea. Mm -hmm.